Hello and welcome to this video on the playlist of dermatological cases. Today I want to talk you about some oral diseases in the form of cases. I'm Dr. Nabet Riyahi, board certified dermatologist. The images in this video are extracted from some books, websites, articles and examination. Now let's jump into cases. Question 1. Match the figure with history. What you see here in these images? As you see here in, in image 1, there is gingival hypertrophy. In an image 2, there is some papules and nodules in the anterior of tongue, and in 3 and 6, there is leukocrotosis, as diffuse form in the 3 and patchy in the 6 image. And in 4, we have here a hemorrhagic bulla, and in uh, figure 5, there is some papules in the form of couple stone configuration. History of medullary thyroid cancer could be indicative of men to be. As you know, men is abbreviation for multiple endocrinoplasia and has three forms, 1, 2A, and 2B. And in 2B, we have the triad of medullary thyroid cancer for chromocytoma and multiple uh, mucosal neuroma. So the figure 2 here that presents with some papules and nodules on the anterior of tongue could be matched with history 1. And history of follicular thyroid cancer could be found in Cowden syndrome that manifests with multiple papules in the form of couple stone configuration as seen in figure 5. History of asthma could be indicative of a person who is receiving some corticosteroid sprays for a long time that could result in this hemorrhagic bulla and history of nail dystrophy could be found in the, the background of dyscrotosis congenita that manifest with the triad of skin pigmentation, oral leukocrotosis in the patchy form and nail dystrophy. So the history of four could be matched with six and history of red reaching of nails is a Characteristic finding of derrier disease could be matched with diffuse leukocrotosis in figure 3 and history of debilitating joint contractures could be a finding of infantile, uh, of the juvenile uh, hyaline fibromatosis that manifests with gingival hypertrophy as seen in figure 1. As said before, the nerve changes could be found in derrier as with this diffuse leukocrotosis and dyscrotosis congenita with this patchy leukocrotosis especially on the tongue and this patient a 55 year old man present with renal failure anemia and hypercalcemia as you see here in the history there is a triad of renal failure anemia and hypercalcemia indicative of multiple myeloma that could result in some infiltration, focal infiltration in oral cavity as seen here in this image. This image could generally indicative of leukemia manifestation. So the correct answer is multiple myeloma. And here there is positive history of anemia and heart failure. In history and as seen in the figure there is large corrugated tongue indicative of an infiltrative process such as seen in systemic amyloidosis and here you see some cases of systemic amyloidosis that here in this figure there is to somewhat presence of purpura and petechia in addition to this large and corrugated tongue. And here, what history is compatible with this finding? What you, do you see here? There is some deposition as multiple papules in the anterior of tongue. Don't mistake it with cobblestone appearance. There is a deposition-like appearance. And here, the histopathology also confirmed the clinical finding as the position of amorphous material in the dermis 
here is papillary dermis expanding to reticular dermis so these findings as is indicative of a deposition disease could suggestive of lipoid proteinosis and here what's the diagnosis this is another finding of lipoid proteinosis as lingual frenulum and here you see here lingua frenulum in the background of lipoid proteinosis and Gerlin sign in Ehlers Danlos syndrome and what's the diagnosis as you see here there is varicose patch and plaque and ice pick scars and here beaded papules alongside the palpebral rim and here oral findings these image is also indicative of lipoid proteinosis lesions on the tongue since six months ago it was a board question what's the diagnosis what do you see here there is a solitary varicose plaque on the tongue and here foamy macrophages indicative of versiformis xenoma you see here two board questions in the past on the Verociformis xenoma, a middle-aged woman with oral lesion since six, since three years ago, and here lesion on the tongue since six months ago. These lesions are commonly asymptomatic. And here, oral white lesion for several months in a four-year-old girl. What's the diagnosis? What do you see here? There is a well-defined white patch that is spongy. The diagnosis is white sponge nevus that is commonly involved oral cavity white sponge nevus could involve any part of oral cavity but commonly found on buccal area as seen here in this image and question 10 what's the diagnosis as you see here there is white lesions with rag and shaded surface indicative of Murkicaceo buccarum this finding involved the oral cavity commonly as bilaterally and here what is the diagnosis as you see here there is mo multiple flat warts like papules on the tongue and the histopathology is also confirmed this finding so the, the diagnosis here is hex disease and here is another case of hex disease as you see here there is involvement of lip area the causative agent for this type of disease are hpv type 13 and 32 so the correct answer here is 4 and you see here some examples of hec disease in the clinical view what you see is multiple flat wart like papules and here, a 33-year-old man who involved in respiratory distress following COVID-19 infection is under treatment. This respiratory distress could indicate a patient who is receiving corticosteroid sprays that result in this hemorrhagic bulla on the posterior of oral cavity that the histopathology is also can film this diagnosis. This question is repeated in the board examination for many times. Here are some ex some other examples of this diagnosis as angina bullosa hemorrhagica. The key findings of this diagnosis are a straight spray intaking, hemorrhagic bulla, and involvement of oral cavity. The test maker mentioned in questions to 
a patient who is asthmatic or someone who is receiving inhalational straight. And here is another question that has been repeated in board examination for many times. There is a cystic space under the tongue here with blue hue discoloration and here some cystic space found in histopathology that is indicative of lymphangioma circumscriptum. Here are some examples of lymphangioma circumscriptum in board examination. Lesions since birth, asymptomatic. Lesions since birth, and here also asymptomatic. These two images are congenital form, and this one that is located on the penis is the acquired form of lymphangioma circumscriptum. As you see here, the lesion are vesicular, and this one is also vesicular. And here you see the histopathology of lymphangioma circumscriptum. The histopathology of lymphangioma circumscriptum in, uh, include hyperkeratosis of epidermis, lymphatic dilation, as you see here, and This lymphatic uh, dilation are surrounded by this hyperkeratotic epidermis in the form of claret. So this, these are hyperkeratosis, lymphatic dilation, and epidermal claret. And question 14. Lesions since birth, there is no change in lesion size. What do you see here? There is painted dark red papules and macules in the clinical view and on dermoscopy, there's multiple dark color areas intersected by white bands. These findings are indicative of angiokeratoma. If the color of these balls were red instead of dark, as you see here, the diagnosis would be Bowen syndrome for this dermoscopy image. and compare these two diagnoses, lymphangioma circumscriptum here and angiokeratoma. As said, the angiokeratoma man manifests with pointed dark red papule and macule, and lymphangioma circumscriptum is typically a vesicular eruption. However, in this image is similar to this image to somewhat, but the distinguishing feature here is distortion of time due to cystic space formation in lymphangioma circums circumscriptum. And here is a syndromic form of angiokeratoma as the patient manifests with paresthesia and pain in extremity and hypohydrosis, indicative of Fabry disease. Any part of eye from corneal lens and retina could be involved in Fabry disease, but a characteristic and early finding of eye involvement is wall corneal opacities that found in 75% of patients. And here is another question, important question on Fabry disease. Here you see torches conjunctival vessels. These tortured vessels could be found on palpebral and uh, retinal area of eye. An important differential diagnosis of angiokeratoma is pigmented papilla of the tongue if the test maker doesn't mention to dermoscopy or histopathology or further findings in the history. Pigmented papilla of the tongue. You see here the color of these lesions are more dark in comparison with uh, the lesion of angiokeratoma. And here you see the 
histopathology finding of angiocratoma as hyperkeratosis, thrombosis, dilated vessels, and rich ridges that clutching vessels. And here is another question on board examination. A symptomatic lesion since childhood. What do you see here? There is some red papules uh, and uh, nodules. Some are bluish here. And as you see here, there is proliferation of blood vessel here and endothelial cells indicative of hemangioma of infancy. The important clue in the history is the onset of lesions since childhood, not at birth. And here you compare here lymphangioma circumscriptum, angiocratoma, and hemangioma of infancy. A 40-year-old Maui's history of malnutrition. What do you see here? There is confluent hair-like projection on the dorsal aspect of the tongue in the midline with the diagnosis of hairy tongue. The history finding here is malnutrition. The color of hairy tongue could be yellow as, in this, as you see here in this case and here as black. The risk factors for developing this condition are, as said before, malnutrition, smoking, poor oral hygiene, hot beverages, and use of oxidizing mouthwashes. So the correct answer here is alcoholism. That is not a risk factor for developing this condition. And here you see some examples of hairy tongue. A 40-year-old female who is involved in esophagus carcinoma. What do you see here? There is a smooth, beefy tongue lacking papilla. In conjunction with esophagus carcinoma, the plumber Vinson is indicated. However, if the test maker, instead of esophagus carcinoma, emphasizes on neuropathies in the history, the diagnosis of vitamin B12 deficiency as pernicious anemia is the diagnosis. So with this figure, according to history, both Plummer Vinson or uh, both Plummer Vinson and uh, vitamin B12 deficiency could be considered. And here, which type of psoriasis is more associated with this condition? As you see here, there is well demarcated area of erythema surrounded by this white serpiginous border, indicative of geographic time. A finding could be found in normal individuals and also in patients with psoriasis, especially postular psoriasis. And here you see some psoriasis form finding on the tongue with this tongue that is furrowed and fissured. This finding that is indicative of geographic tongue and here that is indicative of fissured tongue. Both of them are indicative of Annulus migrans, and here there is a nail that is destroyed, and there are some pustules here, indicative of acrodermatitis, con acrodermatitis continua. Both of these back uh, conditions are found in the background of psoriasis. Here we have geographic and fissured tongue, and here acrodermatitis continua. Two findings of psoriasis, especially postular psoriasis. And here is also another patient who is a well-known case of psoriasis taking some drug come here with these mucositis, ulcer-like lesions. The most probable drug here is methotrexate. Methotrexate could 
cause some skin findings in the background of dermatological disease as this mucositis in the psoriasis and inducing nodulosis in the background of rheumatoid arthritis or prominence of vessels in the background of rheumatoid arthritis. And here is also another case, question 24, evaluation for which test is logical in this patient. As you see here, there is numerous furrows and grooves indicative of fissure tongue. Fissure tongue is a finding could be found in association with geographic tongue and also in some other conditions such as melkerson rosenthal syndrome, Down syndrome, Cowden syndrome, Pachyonychia congenita, and acromegaly. By uh, considering the acromegaly, the correct answer is to evaluation for growth hormone. So, the same condition is reported in his father. The most probable inheritance is, as you see here, there is another case of fissure tongue. Fissure tongue, as said before, is found in normal individuals in association with geographic tongue and in melkerson rosenthal syndrome, Down, Cowden, Pachyonychia congenita, acromegaly. This condition needs no treatment, and as said before, and um, in normal individuals, it could uh, be inherited as an autosomal dominant inheritance. Which one is a normal finding? What you see here is geographic tank here, torus mandibulus as bony formation here and here are multiple implicated lesion on the palatal surface of the oral cavity indicative of nicotine stomatitis so the correct answer is one that is not a normal finding a known case of smoking referred to you after which period of cessation of smoking the lesion will be disappeared as you know after cessation of smoking, it takes about one to two weeks to complete resolution of these lesions. And as you see here, there are multiple implicated papules on the erythematous mucosa indicative of nicotine stomatitis. Positive history of mastectomy. You see here some cobblestone appearance configuration papules in the oral cavity indicative of Cowden syndrome that is in, um, associated with several malignancies as breast, endometrial, thyroid, fol uh, the, actually follicular thyroid carcinoma and it has also some skin findings typically here trichelema and so it was Cowden syndrome and here these images are indicative of multiple uh, mucosal norma that's seen in men to be there is some papules and nodules in the anterior of this tongue and here you see a spindle cell uh, and a fibrotic stroma indicative of multiple mucosal norma in men to be we have phacromocytoma so here refractory hypertension could be seen and this patient also have medullary thyroid carcinoma that could result in diarrhea this patient actually are marfanoid habitus but the parathyroid hyperplasia is found in men 1 and men 2a. So the correct answer for this question is 1. That is not related to these images. And here, what do you see? There are some 
multiple papules and plaques whitish papules and plaques on the tongue in a diffuse configuration as said before when there is multiple flat like papules the heck disease is the diagnosis but this configuration of diffuse white papules and nodules in a diffuse form on the tongue is indicative of two main diagnoses verrucous carcinoma or oral florid papillomatosis both of them are caused by hpv type 6 and 11 but heck disease as said before is caused by hpv 13 and 32 so the correct answer for this question is hpv type 6 uh, and 11 not 13 and 32 that is indicative of heck disease and here you see some pigmentation on the lip and oral cavity this finding could be found in some syndromes as Potsjeger, Bandler and Lodger Hansiker the prototype of these uh, syndromes is POTS trigger that is associated with malignancy of GI tract as multiple polyps, pancreas, testis, and ovary. So all of them could be found in this patient. Preoral region and oral mucosa. Another finding in this in POTS jigger is longitudinal melanonychia. This page, uh, the GI finding of POTS jigger patients are hamartomatous uh, GI polyps. But here, this patient manifests with some pigmentation on the lip and digit. When in question, the question maker uh, mentioned um, some lentigines on the lip, digit, and oral cavity, and also longitudinal melanonychia, free diagnosis could be considered. Potsjeger, Lager Hansiker, and Bandler. If in the history there is GI hemangiomas, the diagnosis is Bandler, but if instead of GI hemangioma, GI polyps mentioned, the diagnosis is Potsjeger. So here the diagnosis is Bandler syndrome. Which one is not suggested in the differential diagnosis of this figure? As said before, for this Patient, Lager Hansiker, Bandler, and Postjager could be related to this image. But centrofacial lentigenous is manifest, uh, manifest with uh, multiple lentigines on the face in butterfly configuration. So the correct answer here is 1. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next video, I'll continue other cases.